Hi and welcome back to Paramedic Project, practical tips for novice paramedics. Today we're talking about the respiratory status assessment and uh, I'll give you my tips on how to do this well, make it a little bit easier for you when you're starting out in your practice and to, uh, to make sure we do it quite thoroughly in all our patients. We talked already in the primary survey uh, about gaining a respiratory rate and uh, I'm not going to go through all of the elements of the respiratory status assessment with you today, that's up to you guys to learn that and uh, to go away and read about those different elements. But I'll give you a couple of tips uh, on how you can uh, make sure the assessment's thorough and to make it easier for you. First big thing I like to do with, uh, with a lot of my patients is I like to expose their chest. This might mean cutting open a t-shirt or, uh, or undoing a shirt or jacket, but it really allows us to see the actual chest wall. Um, before we go on, just a couple of notes on exposing patients. Um, you need to make sure that whenever you do this, it's respectful. You need to gain consent from the patient. You need to make sure the patient doesn't get cold. So it might not be appropriate to do it if it's a really cold night uh, or if it's in a public place. Um, you need to give the patient some privacy if possible when you're doing this. And uh, whenever we expose someone, we always cover them up afterwards again to keep them warm and to give them their dignity. Um, so on the note of respiratory status and uh, exposing the patient's chest, it really allows us to visualise the chest wall allows us to see uh, exactly which big muscles they're using when they're breathing in, whether they're using these big muscles of the neck and shoulders and back to inspire forcefully and deeply. Also allows us to see whether there's any recession between their ribs and their intercostal spaces, and also uh, whether there's recession above their clavicles. Um, this is a sign that they're working really hard to breathe also. Finally, it allows me to look at their abdominal muscles and see how hard they're working, whether they're pushing out forcefully uh, to expire with their abdominal muscles. So that's a great tip. The other thing I like to do is uh, I like to leave my breath sound oscillation to last. Now paramedics love their toys, so they go for their stethoscopes pretty early in the piece, uh, but I like to leave that to last, just to confirm my clinical suspicions. Uh, so I do my entire respiratory status assessment. I have a pretty clear idea about what I'm going to find when I do oscillate, but I really like to take in all my clinical findings and then uh, use my stethoscope to oscillate for breath sounds and confirm my, my, my clinical suspicions about the patient's respiratory status. So uh, thanks for joining us once again. I hope that's been helpful. And uh, remember, check us out on social media and uh, welcome any comments or feedback or questions you might have. And uh, we'll see you next time.